Hey guys, I'm going to give people a few minutes to join in, um, but just want to introduce myself, Douglas Piper. I'm in my garage studio at the moment, uh, so I'll give y'all a tour of that in just a little bit. And um, yeah, I'm a printmaker and give, here to give y'all a little bit of a demo. Uh, just one of my processes on uh, printing a two color or two woodblock print. So we'll give people a few more minutes to join up. Um, but in the meantime, here we are. So I will give y'all a brief tour of the space. Um, I do have a studio with my wife down at Art Crossing, which is downtown. Uh, we both have studios, uh, 104 and 106. Uh, very cleverly named Douglas Piper Art and Meredith Piper Art. So um, check that out if you get a chance. Uh, we're kind of in and out uh, by appointment only at the moment, just while we continue to, yeah, figure out what's what makes sense for us and our patrons coming into the studio. So. Anyways, um, here's a little preview of just what I've got set up here in our garage. So, um, this is a little area we've set up. Um, give me a second, sorry. Ah, there we go. Um, so, we've got just our old kitchen countertop actually that we utilized and changed up. But this is what we'd be working on today, um, printing this block, the Greenville Liberty Bridge downtown. And then our second block is um, got the other colors in it. So you can get an idea of uh, what it's gonna look like. And then uh, that was a test print before I got the colors right. So that'll be an idea of what it looks like. But um, yeah, for those who are unfamiliar with printmaking, uh, you start out with a block, uh, similar to this, but blank, or you start out with linoleum, um, and you carve it. And so I've already carved these as we don't have the time to spend you watching me carve, but I will show you all some of the tools I have uh, that I use to, to carve both linoleum and wood blocks. So there's various uh, gauges and, um, and sizes um, for the knives. You've got little, oh, there we go. Let's get it focused. Anyways, so I don't know if you can tell, but that's a V groove. Let's see if we can get a bigger knife. Maybe that'll help. Um, that is a U groove. Nope, not one to focus. Anyways, you can get the idea. So different um, different knives give you different textures as you're carving, and um, and the big difference between the wood block and the linoleum is with uh, linoleum, it's you can carve any direction and just give all sorts of texture. With the wood, you've it's easier to carve the direction of the grain. Uh, so you've got to be cognizant of that and um, and take that in consideration on your design and um, and just be willing for it to splinter and do all sorts of things that you don't want it to to do. Uh, oh, and a little trick: if you are a printmaker and you've got a bunch of these just in a box, old wine corks um, you can use uh, to help protect the ends, so you don't have to keep sharpening them every single time. So that's with the blocks. Um, over here, this is just a glass plan panel that I use um, to do a lot of work on. I use a couple different inks. Currently, I've just got this speedball in various colors, and then I hand mix everything. Uh, I use Collagio as well. I'm probably saying that wrong, but I uh, use their oil-based uh, inks as well, which is nice because it gives a little different texture and prints a little differently. And then um, got all our rollers and palette knives and all this good stuff to help mix mix what we're looking for. And then y'all may notice I do not have a press. Um, I have a press in the studio, uh, but right now we'll be using my handy dandy trusty wooden spoon. Um, which, for those that don't know the story, 
uh, my grandfather was a wood carver and he passed away and I acquired some of his carving tools and he had carved a lot of wooden spoons and so when I had just gotten started printmaking uh, I used his wooden spoons actually to hand press every single print um, so I had to retire them because they were uh, they were getting worn down but I've still got them and um, that's he is an important part of why uh, I got started in printmaking and carving and all that so um, I'm going to put you back on the tripod and start showing the process so y'all can watch and see what we've got in store. Okay, um, so I am watching from my computer as well. So if you cannot hear me, just comment uh, in the feedback and I will correct that. So anyways, thanks for joining me guys. I really do appreciate it. Um, it's, I love getting a chance to really showcase printmaking and, and all the different avenues that can open up for you. So, so here we go. So this is our black block. Um, our first color we will be using today, which is normally a little different. Normally you start on the colors and then you finish on the dark, um, but the way my image is, uh, I'm starting with this. And let me grab the second block just to show you. So the second block is right here. Um, gives you an idea, uh, showing you the three colors we'll be using that will go on top. And um, yeah, so we'll go into that block a little more in just a minute. So right now we're just starting off with the black. This is just your regular speedball water-based ink. And so what you want to do is roll out the ink to where it's like velvet, uh, to where it's sticking and uh, you can see the sheen a little bit of um, of velvet. So once you get that, then you just start rolling. So you want to make sure it's very even all around. And you're going to have to come back a bunch of times to, to get more ink and to keep rolling it out. And like I said, feel free to put any comments any questions in the comments section, uh, I am able to see that and can try and answer whatever I, I may miss or um, may have just glossed over. So, we, so this block is just a pine wood edge glued um, panel. It's a 16 by 16 inch. Uh, you can pick that up at Home Depot, at Lowe's, uh, just about anywhere. That's the nice thing with, with printmaking, you can use all sorts of materials and it does not have to be very expensive. Uh, in fact, some of my earlier prints, when we took out our kitchen cabinets, I used uh, some of the old shelving to carve a few of my prints. Okay, so we are have got an even layer. I went ahead earlier and marked this out. Uh, I think y'all can see it. Yeah. Uh, so this is my piece of paper and I've taped it off and uh, this allows me to register it for this color and then the second color. Uh, there's a couple of other options you could do to register it. There's this Turns Burton uh, registration pins. I don't know if y'all can see that. Um, but that's one way to register it if uh, you've got a big series. Um, since we're doing this a little smaller here in the garage, I've just got a wood stop right here and I've got it marked out exactly where my paper will go. So we'll print this and then when we print the second block, it'll be easy peasy. So let me make sure it's all lined up. Looks good. I'm gonna grab some paper. So this is some white sulfite block printing paper. Um, I occasionally use BFK Rees, 
Uh, also use heavy weight. Um, and yeah, so those are the main, main paper I use. I use a little bit of rice paper, um, Japanese rice paper, which for some of my smaller blocks. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm lining the end down and then I just lower the paper. So papers on there, I typically wipe it down once and then I grab the handy dandy spoon and start, start pressing. So with a wooden spoon um, versus a press, uh, a press you would just roll it and it gives even pressure all the way through. Uh, with a wooden spoon, you've got to be intentional to press every spot and to try and keep the same pressure. Um, but the part that I like about the spoon is that there's certain areas of this that I want to press really hard and I want that black to really stand out. And there's other areas, uh, like some of the sky in the background, that I'm not as worried about uh, showing up quite as dark. And so what I'll do is I'll, I won't press quite as hard on there. So um, I don't know if you can see it as I'm pressing. You can see the image come through a little bit. You can see that more when you're, um, when you're actually here and you're, you can see the paper and you can see the block. So it gives you a pretty good indication of where where you press. But the nice thing about having a wooden spoon and not having to worry about a press is that you can do this literally anywhere. On your kitchen countertops, in your garage, at any desk, um, all depending on the size of your block. So. So I feel like I'll press that pretty good. Um, so what I do is I typically have to peek and see how well it, it is going. So I can see a few spots where I didn't press quite as hard that I do want the black to come through. So I'm gonna lay it back down and, um, and press there a little harder. Okay, just gonna peek on this side. So still a few little spots. So sometimes it's pressing harder and other times you just need to add a little more ink. Um, I will say with wood, it absorbs the ink a lot and so your first time you roll ink on here, it'll, it'll soak up a lot, a lot of ink. So you'll have to probably keep rolling a few more times and get the right amount of ink on there. So. Uh, but I'm excited about this print. Um, I wanted to do another bridge, um, slightly different angle and a little more simplified than my linoleum block one. And uh, I had a lot of people ask me for a bigger block. And so, so that's where this idea came from. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really excited how it's uh, turning out. So, and if you're ever doing this, don't feel like you have to do multiple colors. You, your design can stand alone as just a black and white. I think that's that's great. Um, I love this design and I think it can as well. All right, I think I pressed it hard enough. So you can get a good idea of first print. So, um, so I'll come back in and I'll cut the top after I've uh, done the second color or the second block. And then, um, and then this will be matted as well. So it'll look really, really nice. Um, but before it gets matted and packaged all that, this is what it looks like. So this is on an 18 by 24 inch sheet of paper. Um, so let me put this over to the side. All right, so I'm just really showing you all the process. Um, typically when you're doing printmaking, you will, <laughs> you will do majority of your run. Um, and the series run, what I mean by that. And so, um, because this is a demo, I'm gonna actually move on to the other block and, um, and show you all that so you can see what it looks like together. So we will move this out of the way. The other thing to know or to note is that when you are doing multiple blocks, 
you need to let the first color dry. Um, that's super important. So whether you're using oil-based or water-based inks, you want to, yeah, do your first print. Um, typically, you want to let it dry. Uh, all depends on your image and all that, but um, it's better if it's dry. And then, uh, yeah, then after that, you can you can go. So I actually printed some black and white um, or the, with the black block earlier, and all those have dried. So we'll be working on a nice dry surface, and our paper and ink are already dry. So. Uh, so typically, um, there's a few other artists I know that, that do multiple colors on a block, um, but typically you have one color per block. Uh, it's just easier to ink up, it's all that. You'll notice as I start inking up the green um, that it's awkwardly close to the blue. Um, so it's really up to you and that's why I have multiple rollers that are smaller, so it makes that a little easier. So. Let me clean a little bit of this up and uh, then we'll get started on the colors. Um, so if you're just joining us, um, just want to introduce myself again. My name is Douglas Piper. Um, I'm a printmaker and artist in Greenville, South Carolina. And I uh, have a studio downtown Greenville. Uh, so if you're ever walking that way, please stop in and say hey. Um, I also do a good number of um, classes at the Greenville Center for Creative Arts. So if you're ever interested in printmaking uh, wood block or linoleum block, uh, I've done both. Um, and hopefully once we start doing that again, I will get back on and we'll, we'll be able to do another class. So, um, all right, so we got the black ink up. My hands are dirty. Um, so this is really nice when you have a glass surface to, to work on. You can clean up your ink very easily with a palette knife. So then your other colors don't get all nasty. So we've, uh, my wife and I actually mixed these up earlier this morning. Thank you, Meredith. Um, so we've got our yellow and our blue and our green, and I've actually mixed some extender in here, which is pretty much a transparency, so that it will, yeah, be a lot more transparent. Because what I want is, when I'm printing, I want this background, if y'all can see it at all, to come through a little bit. So I don't want it to be just a solid color coming through. So, um, all right, so we got yellow, let's get some blue. Doesn't this blue look just like the Reedy River? I think so. <laughs> Man, if y'all saw the, the river this past uh, day or two, y'all would have seen it at potentially the highest I've ever seen it. And I'm at a local at Greenville, so I've seen the river massively high, but that was on another level. Alright, so we got the green ready, and got blue coming along. Yeah, looks nice. Let's get the yellow. Alright, so for the second block, it's just like the first block. You want to make sure um, we'll make sure it's all registered correctly, but um, you want it to roll out just the same as the black, so you want it to feel like velvet um, as you roll it, and just this consistent noise, which I don't know if you can hear it, but so, all right, we're going to start. So you can tell on my block, I used a little bit darker of a yellow this last time. Um, and I'm using more of a, a buttery yellow for this, this next go around. So, um, let's see, let's give you all a little bit of 
background and history while I'm doing this. Um, so I'm Greenville native, uh, born and raised. I went to Jail Man High School here in town and had a great art teacher, um, Mr. Garner. And uh, he was very encouraging in me trying a lot of different things than traditional arts. And so I did a lot of wood carvings and we did a lot with glass and I did a ton with cans, like old Coke cans and all this stuff and a lot more sculptural. And, and then I went off to Clemson and studied packaging science and graphic communication. Uh, so I still kind of kept up with artwork or with art, but just digitally. So after that, um, moved down to Shreveport, Louisiana, where I met my wife, Meredith. And you know what? She was a studio art major with a degree in psychology as well. And I was like, if I'm going to stick around, I need to figure out art. I need to do some artwork. So if she's painting or something, I can do something else. So so I picked, picked up printmaking, um, and because of that, it has led me to where I am today, which is really cool. So it's really neat how the Lord just keeps that going in you and opens a lot of doors, so very thankful, and thankful for the studio spaces down at Art Crossing. So it's been weird. Uh, we've been at home and the studios have been closed so we've been creating here um, but it's just been weird not being in the studio not seeing people every day and um, all the most of the shows got canceled artist fear and or postponed I should say so it's just been been a weird time for for an artist well for everybody let's be honest okay I think that's enough on the yellow um, I did go back over a couple times just make sure it's a nice even layer um, so now we'll jump into the green, and because I put some extender and um, some retarder in these, uh, these won't dry, and it's beautiful, 66 degrees outside. Um, so because of that, we're we're good. But if you are doing this and it's in the summer, and you do not have AC or you have a fan that's blowing. This stuff will dry really quickly. So that's the beauty of doing the old base inks, is that you could literally mix this one day and then come back the next day and keep printing. Um, so depending how uh, how much time and how serious you are with your printing, uh, old base inks can be really, really beautiful to use. All right, I really like this green that we're using. Um, so I'm being a little careful to not get it on the blue, but a little bit's gonna get on there, but that's okay. When I when I do the blue, it will cover it. So, so um, yeah. So I do some demonstrations. This is my first digital one. Um, but I hope to do a few more, and I hope to do a few potentially virtual classes. Um, I've been talking with a few people at the GCCA and um, might do a, a kids printmaking demo. So if you're if you're interested in that, or you know somebody who would be, um, please please let them know. Um, so here we go. All right. So. It takes a little time, so that's why I'm killing it with talking. So I hope y'all don't mind that, hearing my voice. Okay, so I feel pretty good about the green. Um, so now we'll dive into the blue, which is the hardest one, because it is tiny. The really great thing about um, printmaking that I love is that as you carve it, you have this idea of what it's going to look like. But then, when you start inking the, the plate or the block, um, you start just noticing all this texture coming through that you weren't quite sure how it would show up. And so it's this 
beautiful unveiling process as you as you create and as you carve and and it matches your hand and so that's the great thing uh, at least with wood block and linoleum um, I know there's other printmaking out there to where it's etching and it's more of your uh, more of your lines versus carving but So I do have a computer in front of me, so if anybody has any questions, please feel free to just put in the comments. I'm happy to answer anything uh, to the best of my ability. Um, I will say I'm self-taught um, in terms of printmaking. I've had a few different uh, individuals that have been incredible, um, incredible help with, or they've been willing to answer my my questions that I have and one is Kent Ambler uh, he's in town and if y'all hadn't seen his work and his wood blocks uh, y'all are missing out uh, but check him out on Instagram Kent Ambler and the other one is our really good friend Mark Mulfiger uh, he is an incredible incredible artist I feel like he's good at literally everything he touches um, so printmaking is not something he does all the time but he is currently on kick, so find him and follow him as well, because um, he's got some incredible, incredible work. Um, it seems to be just kind of a, he's a renaissance guy. He does it all. So Ken Ambler and Mark Mulfinger, check them out if you want to know more about other types of printmakers um, that, that have been really influential and helpful for me. So. Um, finished up the blue. There's a few spots. I got some blue on the green, so I'm just going to come back through and clean it. Um, this is where if you had multiple blocks with other colors, it wouldn't be quite as noticeable. Um, but we may do with what we have. So, all right. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to line up. Um, so this block is actually a quarter of an inch skinnier than the other block. Uh, so I've already accounted for that and so I know exactly where to line this guy up. Still at the base and we'll still put the paper here at the top and lay it down and press it. And let's see how that works. All right, so this is a print from earlier. Um, so it's fully dry, or mostly dry now. Um, so we're gonna Try that and try our first, first second block color. So, so I lay it down, I match up the sides exactly how I had it, and then I lay it down. All right. So that is looking pretty good. I'm going to hand press it first, just make sure there's no little air bubbles or anything. And, and then, because all these were solid colors, I do want to press this pretty good. And, um, and I do like pressing the direction that I've carved, because if I miss any spots, uh, it'll look a little more intentional. Um, and just go with the flow. So. so I was also intentional when I was carving this to be uh, slightly off in some areas. So I'll point them out to you. Um, but on the bridge, I wanted there to be a little bit of white coming through. Um, so it uh, is like a highlight on it. And, um, and then I've got some other spots where... Uh, in the in the water where there it's white as well so you'll notice a few of those areas and a few of those spots uh, all right so i'm going to peek at it and see how it's covering Pressing. 
Um, so there's a few other objects. If you didn't want to go the wooden spoon route, um, there's a bamboo baron. Uh, so it's a circular disc about that big with bamboo on it. And you would go and press it um, just like this. And so that's, that's one way a lot of artists use because um, it's a bigger surface area than the wooden spoon. But now you know why each print takes quite some time. Um, this process is long and tedious uh, to get the product you want and to get it exact, especially when you start start using multiple colors. It um, just starts compounding. So, all right, let's take another peek, see how that's looking. All right, it's looking pretty good. slowly come up there we go nice that looks really good I'm glad I changed that green up um, so just to I don't know if y'all can see it I'm gonna try and hold it uh, in the green here you can see just these white marks um, you can see it in the blue but you really see it in the green which is really nice and the part that I love about using a spoon and using this um, cheaper wood is you just have some of the grain come through and I think it just adds to the composition a lot. Uh, if you could really see it uh, in the sky you could see more of the grain coming through. Uh, unfortunately on this video uh, it might be a little difficult uh, but I'll try and get some good photos and, and highlight those for you. Um, but I love how it turned out. It, uh, it went really well. So yeah so that's the process of a two wood block um, cut. Uh, these are going to be available for sale at my studio in Oman. Uh, so if you're really interested in one of these, please just message me or let me know uh, or follow me and I'll um, be sure to post it. But like I said, this is, we're going to let these dry. Uh, then I'll cut a mat out and, um, and get it all set up for, for you. But it's a 16 by 16. So fully matted out, it'll be an 18 by 18. And um, yeah, oh my gosh. These colors work really well together. So I'm really happy with this. There's nothing I would change. So this is the first of the series. Um, so let me go set this down real quick. All right. Um, well, I think that's it, guys. Um, that showcases a very simplified, um, but hopefully informative on uh, two block print printing um, with multiple colors and just the whole get up and all the tools and all that um, please please feel free to reach out to me either email or um, message me or my website is super easy douglaspiper.com um, but very thankful for the Greenville Center for Creative Arts for doing these demos and allowing us to jump on and and uh, highlight our artwork um, so really appreciate it really appreciate appreciative of them there we go um so thanks for following along guys and um yeah hope y'all enjoyed it hope y'all learned a little bit and uh yeah we'll see y'all around Greenville.